Okay, I guess my volume is up. Hey, Sugu. So I'm up and about. It is now Friday morning, 5.50 a.m. And um, I got up, I looked at a scripture on my phone, and then my mind began to wander. And I, I looked at a few things online. Then I started to scroll through my email. And I came across a subscription well, an email that I'm subscribed to from Proverbs 31 Ministries. And the title is called Speaking Love in a Digital Generation. Um, it's not that I hadn't thought about it, but you know how sometimes you run across something and it makes you stop and think. This particular one, um, it says, it gives you a scripture and then it begins to talk about it. The scripture is Acts 3, 2 through 4. It says, Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg for those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Okay. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. That's the NIV. Um, I have a King James Version study Bible. And in my study Bible, it says, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked and alms and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us verse 5 says and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them and the um, email begins to talk about a mother who she said years ago, you know, she was just entranced in, oh, excuse me, working on her business. She was doing a lot of things on her computer. And her children entered the room. And she said she didn't pause or look up. She just kept typing. And she said her kids laughed and said, how funny, mom. You're typing about being more social but you're ignoring us while you're on your computer. And so right then and there, it just hit me. How many times have we been so engulfed in something no matter what it is that we didn't stop and acknowledge or pay attention to one of our loved ones or give them our full attention for even just a moment I stopped and I thought about how many times I've done this um, somebody come in the house and I'm typing or whatnot, or I'm on the phone, something. And even though I may speak, sometimes do I stop what I'm doing to actually connect with that person? Um, it's not intentional. And sometimes I don't think about it that way. But think about how many times you have, you've done that. And so she began to say, um, she says, this may sound elementary, but how many times have you ignored a spouse, child, or a friend while you continue to text, answer emails, or scroll through social media? It's easy for us to become so entranced with our phones and tablets that we don't notice the people around us. 
We miss opportunities to minister to our family members and even our friends and strangers when our eyes are locked downward. And this is something that is, is so common today because cell phones and tablets and computers give us a connection to people all over the world and information that we would normally have to hunt for. We would have to do a lot of legwork um, and some things that we may not even have the opportunity to receive. Um, the social media or the internet gives us um, good and bad, as we all know. And being able to connect with people all over the world is a good thing. Being able to stop. What you're doing and pay attention to others is a good thing. I fall short in this area sometimes. I can sit here and admit. Because even, y'all know sometimes I'm live. Or maybe I'm recording a video or something like that. And something else is going on in my household. And I'm sitting here doing something totally different. Which my family do understand. Um, but reading this kind of um, makes me want to stop and think. Not that I'm doing anything wrong. But where I can... Um, make a shift okay make a shift because nobody wants to be ignored even if it's not intentional and even intentionally it feels bad to be ignored and we may not even look at it as we are ignoring somebody we're just trying to finish what we're doing you don't want to lose your train of thought you know um, yeah, excuse me I could go back to sleep, but now that I'm on here talking, I'm yawning left and right. In the email, it, it goes on to say, it says, here's how you can practice the shift. They call it something else. I'm calling the shift. Um, whether you're texting on your phone or watching TV. Um, before I even say that, what are some things you think about this and if, this has ever happened to you in your life. Even if you're going through something, you don't even have to be on the internet. Even if you're going through something in your mind or in your body, your spirit, and it, it's it's got you confused, you're, you're perplexed, you're just like, you're aggravated, you're frustrated, you can't calm down, you can't think. And your children, your spouse, your family members, somebody's calling and you just don't want to be bothered. You know, you just like, mm, I can't I can't do that right now. How many times have we done that? So now at this point, no matter what, it's an opportunity to be intentional. Because at that moment, God can either do so he can do several things, okay? Or he can allow us to do or he will give us however at that moment sometimes if you pick up the phone if you stop what you're doing and it will automatically shift okay for one you stop what you're doing okay you kind of crack the seal a little bit and so you pick up the phone and you start talking hello they begin to verbalize with you you listen, okay? Whatever's being said at that moment, you can either listen and give them a, a little attention because when you do that, eventually, it's like, even if they say, well, how you doing? Girl, I'm over here going through it. Sometimes when you start talking about it, it gets it off of you instead of it sitting there and just growing and growing and growing if you're on the phone with the right person. Sometimes you could be on the phone with the wrong person and they want to hear about your plans or your pain so that they can enhance on it. They want to know that you're doing bad. They want to know that you going through it in your relationship. They want to know these things. They're not there to love on you and encourage you and help you through it. 
but they want to know so they can go ahead and laugh, so they can they can talk about it, so they can run tell that, so they can do whatever. So it depends on what type of person you're on the phone with. If you're on the phone with somebody that is going to pour into you, there's a change that's going to happen. If that's not the case, if you got somebody that, that don't mean you any good and you have gone through something so much today that you didn't even stop and ask God to, you know, give you discernment, to help you, to show you, Lord, who am I to talk to besides you? You know, I'm supposed to come and give all my burdens to you, you know. Um, you ask God to use somebody to encourage you or you just go and pray to God, period. And he just allows somebody to be that for you in your life, that encouragement besides him, you know, because you always can get encouragement from the word of God. But sometimes somebody, he will place somebody in your life that has walked in those shoes that can also guide you as well, can help you, love on you. We're supposed to bear each other's burdens. So somebody that can bear your burden with you. Sometimes we don't have that. We we enter into a phone call or a relationship with somebody that's there to just suck you dry and you don't even see it. Sometimes we don't see it because of everything that we're going through and, you know, we just might be blinded for the moment. What can we do at this point? One thing it says when you sent someone approaching, get ready to perform the shift. Be intentional. And I know some of y'all may be sick of hearing me say be intentional, but be intentional. Um, you It's premeditated, you know. Um, it is something that you are going to do on purpose, uh, with a purpose, okay, to acknowledge that person to let them know I see you um, and to verbalize with that person connect with that person and who knows where the conversation will lead because it's like I say you you may be missing an opportunity to minister to that person or that person to minister to you we just never know until we make the shift change your thoughts renew your mind Sometimes we can, at that moment, somebody can come in and, or can call your name and you answer and you turn away. And then there's something that can happen. Who knows? There's so many different scenarios. And they can say something to you and it can trigger your mind back to a scripture or something of encouragement that you saw. Something. You just never know. But sometimes we got to break the seal. We got to make the shift in our routine so that we don't miss a blessing. And when I say miss a blessing, that's either us being a blessing or us receiving a blessing. Sometimes you got to make the shift. So on this Fill Me With Just a Little More Jesus Friday, reading Acts chapter 3, verse 2 through 4, what well, I did 2 through 5. Because verse 5 says, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. So the man that was there at the gate, he was asking for something. Every time he saw somebody, he asked for something. And when he saw Peter and John, they looked at him. On purpose they made eye contact with him they acknowledged him on purpose and at that point when he they made eye contact at that point he was expecting he already was expecting because he was asking but because they took the time to look at him there was a shift okay he was expecting to receive something of them somebody may call you somebody may come by somebody may sit next to you uh in the doctor's office or stand beside you in the line in the grocery store and strike up a conversation they're expecting something they're expecting for you to listen 
Who knows what the conversation is going to be about, but God knows. But you got to always be willing to make the shift, to be intentional about being a blessing. And I mean being a blessing in so many ways you can be a blessing. Just to listen to somebody intentionally. Just to give a smile. Even though you may feel like hitting somebody in the throat. And I don't mean a... But sincerity, you know, with care. Um, and it's possible because... Somebody love you. Somebody care for you. Somebody has been generous to you. When I say generous, making, they just gave whatever it was that needed to be given. Whether it's understanding, whether it's a listening ear, whether it's helping some sort of, sort of way, somebody was intentional with you. And so on this Feel Me With Just A Little More Jesus Friday, I pray that this word in Acts chapter 3 will fill you with new revelation. Where it will trigger something in you to make you do a self-check of some of your routines, some of your habits that you may not even know that you have, um, some ways that may need to change, some ways that you can improve, or you need to even just basically acknowledge that, hey, wow, this is something that I do. being intentional making eye contact connecting with someone just to listen or for them to listen it's not easy to find somebody that you can trust to listen to you and not judge you and um, tear you down God is always listening but somehow y'all sometimes we get to the point where We want somebody that we can see to physically talk back to us. We don't want to take the time to listen and connect with God. And it's not, oh, see, that's what happens when you get to fooling with stuff. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, lost my train of thought. But um, y'all read. Acts chapter 3, 2 through 5, and see how it bless you. Okay? But be intentional. Let God fill you with his word today. Because um, you may be able to help change somebody's life today with just a pause or a shift that is needed. Just, just... A few minutes of attention can change somebody's life. I'm serious. And we don't think about it. Um, sometimes we don't think about it. We don't think about it like that. You know, we get so engulfed in what we're doing that we just don't want to slow down. Or just let me finish this right here. I know I do that. Especially with all that's going on in my house. Can you please let me finish what I'm doing? You know, especially when you've been struggling all day to get something done or you're just looking around and it just seems like there's so much going on in the house. But sometimes to just take a few minutes. I think about even just sitting here just now thinking about that ways of yesterday, how I could have slowed down. Um, I think about my son when he comes. And, or Ash, when she comes in from work, she walk in the door. Hey, Ash, you know, just the moment to acknowledge somebody. You just don't know what type of day somebody has had. Um, I've had some days where I, it just, it truly, just, it, I hate to say it hurt me, but I just didn't want to open my mouth. I didn't. I was in that bad head space, sulking, pouting. frustrated, whatever it is, just don't want to say nothing. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I get like that when I'm going through some stuff. Sometimes I just don't want to say nothing. I just want to stay quiet. Just have to let me deal with it. And then it, 
me dealing with it, sometimes I just stay stuck until I make the shift. And when I open my mouth and I start talking to somebody, not about what I'm going through, but just if somebody asks me a question or if I interact, come out of the closet, come out of my my timeout spot where I'm just sitting there just like, oh, just thinking about how I feel or what somebody said or how frustrated I am. When you sit there and you just keep letting it play over and play over and play over, it makes you sink deeper and deeper into anger, depression, frustration, being disconnected from everybody. Sometimes you do have to give yourself a timeout when you don't feel like you can say the right thing or do the right thing. But to just push, make yourself come out of it and push past it. You have to push past it. And I tell you, it is a good feeling to feel angry and frustrated. And then all of a sudden, when you push past and you decide to do something different or engage in some, you make that shift, it does feel good because it's like there's a weight lifted off of you. Um, but, and we look at it like this, we pray and ask God for certain things, but God, and he, he has made it to where we can do something, you know, faith without works is dead. Okay. If, if we if we want to feel better, you got to do something there. Okay. You got to do something. You can either focus on somebody else. You can pray about it, but you still got to do something either way it go. You got to trust God. You got to do something either way it go. You got to, and um, I know with um, this thing that we do, I've, and like I said, I've said, I've said this before, but it just always rings back to me of how sometimes you could be going through something so bad, but then when you change, you get up and you start doing something for somebody else. You sometimes forget what you were going through or you just no longer feel the same way you did. You now feel lighter. You don't feel the. You don't feel burdened. You, you can find yourself with a clear head. Um, but being intentional, y'all, being intentional. Yes, being intentional is a blessing. It really is. It's a blessing. You give a blessing and you receive one. So just like the man that sat here at the gate. Okay, every day he was lame from birth, so he needed help to get there. And every single day he sat there and he asked for help. And it took somebody. And the thing about this, in this particular uh, chapter, in these few verses, look at how this, I, and I just saw this. The word of God says, where two or three are gathered and they agree in his name. Okay. Where two or three gather. Let me get it. It's Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Okay? There am I in the midst of them. And here it is. How many people? It took to just pay him some attention. Peter and John, it was two. And they both paid him some attention. Okay, Peter and John, he asked them, and they both looked at him. They stopped. Okay, they both agreed. They didn't say, okay, well, we're going to stop and look at him. But they both, both made the same decision at the same time to pay him some attention, to be intentional. Where two or three are gathered in my name, okay? And it worked. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them, okay? And it worked. So when you get together with somebody, 
when you are in this walk in life and you're trying to continue to walk by faith, you're walking out the word of God, you're trying to be obedient, you're trying to stay on the right path, making a decision to slow down no matter what and be intentional, whether it's just to say good morning, hold the door for someone, stop and pay someone some attention, answer the phone in spite of you may be tired. You just don't know. You can either save someone's life or they can save yours. They can enrich your life or you can enrich theirs. Something good can happen. Even if somebody called with bad news, there's good that always comes from it. But sometimes we can miss it because we're focusing on the tragedy. And sometimes you can hear bad news that happens to someone and it'll make you focus more on God. It'll make you be more appreciative of your life, more grateful, more thankful, more humble. It'll make you draw closer to him, make you talk to him more. Lord, help me, you know, call on him more. So there's always something good. Well, we might not look at stuff like that, but God does because you need him. You need him more than you did. You, you're paying him more attention than you did. You are calling on him as he requires. And you get to where you're discouraged and your mind just be all over the place and you just can't figure it out. And you just, you've done all you can. And when you start to read the word of God and you start to pray and, and just spend more time with him. And we want to come out. But he has your attention. So just like when your children are, are being disobedient or whatever, or they do something they should, and then you put them on, on a punishment. They may have done something that could have scared you or could have been tragic, any anything. And you're like, okay, well, you can't go outside for a week. They're really wanting to go outside. They want to do something. They want to do whatever it is you've told them they cannot do. But you, as that time, that week progresses, you can see where they are. You know what they're doing. You know who they're not with. And you okay with that. At least you know where they are. You know, they're not into that, into some mess. So the same with God. He knows, he, he knows where you are no matter what, but he's got you where he needs you. He's got you talking to it. He's got you thinking about it. He may have you reading his word. He may even have you testifying to somebody about what you're going through and how God is working it out for you. He's got you right where you are. So take that brief moment today on this Friday. Y'all know Friday is the beginning of this weekend. Days off for people where people can let their hair down and relax. Don't have to worry about clocking in. And dealing with other people and their foolishness. But you're still running the foolishness. Slow down a little bit. Choose good over bad. Choose right over wrong. Be intentional. Soft words. Understanding. Sometimes no words means more. Okay? Check your meme mug. Somebody may have messed you up, you know, made you angry, ooh, like, ooh. But you can check your meme mug. Turn that frown upside down. Let God bless you. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope I made sense. I have, I got a lot of stuff running through my head, y'all. I was trying to decipher, <laughs> trying to get it all out. I wrote nothing down, but it I, when I began to read it, it just hit me like, wow. Just a little thing is that like we still type. You might say, hey, but you're not making eye contact. You know, you're not acknowledging that I see you. Everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to know that they matter. You don't want to be overlooked. 
stepped over. You don't. Nobody does. But it happens. So being intentional. Mm -hmm. About being a blessing. Could change your life and someone else's. Make the shift, you guys. I love y'all. Happy Friday, Silgas. Bye, guys.